Cool. Awesome. Well, good morning. Uh, thanks to everyone for being here, giving me a chance to talk to you about Cobb, uh, which in my opinion is a really interesting natural building material. Uh, it's got a lot of neat effects and a lot of cool aesthetics that you'll see from some of the pictures I've got here. Uh, first of all, we got to talk about what Cobb is. Uh, so Cobb is an earthen building material. It's typically made out of clay, sand, straw, and water. Um, if you have a mix that's too high in sand, it can be flaky. If you have a mix that's too high in clay, it can have problems with shrinkage when it's drying. Uh, so the exact proportions that you're going to mix the material in are going to depend on the soil conditions of your build site. Um, but sometimes people will make it into brick form, as you can see right here, but that kind of gets into the realm of adobe. Uh, mostly, cob is formed into ovular kind of balls that are stacked in course to achieve the desired thickness that you're going for with your walls. Uh, Cobb is typically used in two main capacities, uh, structural and non-structural. And there's plenty of successful examples of structural applications of Cobb, which is where the walls are load bearing and they hold up the roof. Uh, but I think there's a lot of opportunity for utilizing Cobb in non-structural capacities to take advantage of the effects of the material without employing it to hold up weight. Uh, so there's a couple of reasons that you may wanna choose Cobb as a building material. I think there's a growing interest among builders to find sustainable methods of construction. I know that applies to me. I hope it applies to most of you as well. Um, Cobb is super environmentally friendly. I know that when we were talking about earthship homes, we talked about materials potentially off-gassing and with Cobb, you don't ever have to worry about toxic materials or anything. Uh, and there's a lot of benefits from using the materials that you find on site as well. One of the biggest benefits from using materials on site to me is being able to create a structure that aesthetically fits into its immediate environment. Uh, like you see with some of these here, I really like that and think that's an important aspect of construction. And also, Building with Cobb allows you to build a structure that helps to mitigate climate change due to the low embodied energy cost of the materials that you're using. And hopefully that can help cut down on the overall carbon footprint of the structure as well. Another reason you might wanna go with Cobb is availability of materials. Uh, that's a big driver of why you can find this method of construction on every continent. Uh, Earth is pretty readily available in most places. And because, and because Cobb is not super skill intensive to work with, it gives the homeowner an opportunity to participate in the construction, which give them a sense of feeling connected to the structure in which they plan to live and to help them cut down on labor costs, which are one of the highest costs associated with Cobb that I've been able to find. Uh, so working with Cobb, you are likely to run into some issues. One of the biggest ones is lack of technical information on the material. Uh, this can make permitting uh, difficult. But in my research, I did find a company called PSE based out of Oregon, and they offer structural engineering services for people trying to build with alternative methods like cob, um, earth ships, earth bags, and uh, shipping containers and whatnot. So it is possible, but if you're getting into the realm of requiring structural engineering services, you're gonna jack up the cost of your project a lot and that might be an issue. Another issue is difficulty finding builders who specialize in the material and also in the repair of the material. Uh, but you may catch a break with that working in this region. Uh, there's Earth Haven Eco Village that's out in Black Mountain, which is a good networking opportunity for natural builders in this region. Uh, also, another issue that you may run into is uh, that it's very labor intensive uh, mixing the materials and that can be a setback for some people as well as the length of construction because each layer that you're putting up has to dry before you can add a consecutive layer to it. So those are some of the issues that you might run into with building with Cobb. But in spite of all of these issues, there's a lot of benefits to working with Cobb as well. Uh, the top benefit for me is durability. Um, and a testament to that are there are tons of cob buildings all over the world that have been standing for hundreds of years. Uh, 
they're also naturally fire and termite proof as well, uh, as well as uh, resistant earthquakes, I found also. Probably the biggest benefit of cob that most people who know about the material are aware of is its thermal mass ability. Uh, cob is a great thermal mass. Constructed cob, what it will do is it will take in heat and then slowly release it over time. Most of the heat source for this is going to be the sun, but cob is neat in that you can utilize it with other heat sources. So one neat thing that I found in a lot of cob homes are cob rocket stoves, which are where people will make a bench out of cob that'll run along one of their walls, and they will run a uh, part of the exhaust from the fireplace through that cob bench. And it's designed to take in the heat from the exhaust and to release it slowly back into the building, which I thought was a really interesting way to take advantage of the material. Uh, another important thing to note with cob that some people are confused on that I myself was confused on before researching it is that cob has very little insular value. Cob is a thermal mass. Um, so a lot of people, some of these walls can be eight to 12 inches thick and people think that that equates to insular value, but cob doesn't insulate any better than concrete or brick. So I've read some horror stories from people who have built with cob in colder climates. And in a colder place, you certainly have to use insulation uh, to prevent heat loss through your walls. And also some issues that I saw were from temperature extreme changes on interior walls and that creating condensation and moisture issues and on the inside of the house for some people that have built these improperly. So definitely important to know what you're doing. Uh, another great benefit to building with cob is low demolition cost. Uh, because you source most of the materials from the site, you don't have to dump a, a bunch of stuff into a landfill, which also helps to cut down on the embodied energy cost of producing the material as well, that it doesn't have to be landfilled at the end of its use. Uh, a lot of people who live in cob homes claim that when they're constructed properly, they are historically low maintenance, but uh, I didn't find a lot of technical information on this and it's, it's a house, it's gonna, it, like any structure, it's going to require maintenance. Um, but some people who live in these structures report that they're pretty low maintenance when built properly. Uh, so costs. Uh, the costs of building with cob are going to really depend on your chosen application. If you're trying to use cob in a structural capacity to be load bearing, you're very likely going to have to find a builder who is familiar with the material, as well as probably have to pay for engineer approved plans. Uh, to submit to your building officials so that you can get something like this permitted to be built. Um, and another thing that's going to affect the cost is how extensive you want the performance of the building to be. You know, the more extensive you want that performance to be, the more your cost is likely going to go up. But with all of that in mind, Cobb has the potential to be very inexpensive. So with sourcing most of the materials from the site, you know, you have a lot of potential to save a lot of money on material cost with using cob. But, and also, um, you know, after the initial construction of the building, you got to think about the embodied energy cost of the materials that you're using to build with. Um, and, you know, the manufacturing to make the products and the transport to get them to your site and everything. And when you're looking for a combination of low embodied energy and durability, you really can't do much better than cob or other forms of earthen construction, at least to me. Um, some other things to factor into the cost of cob, the biggest one, labor. Uh, so labor, it's very labor intensive to mix the materials and whatnot. Uh, some people will use farming machinery to try to cut down on that labor cost and mixing the materials. But if you have the opportunity, one neat way to do it, and the way that some people choose to do it is in the photo you see here, is mixing it by foot. Um, if you have enough people to participate in a build, it can be efficient to mix it this way. And while you may not know a lot of people who would want to participate mm -hmm. in a build like this, with us being in the region that we're in, it may not be too difficult to source local volunteers who are looking for opportunities mm -hmm. on a natural construction build. Um, so that's something to consider in the cost of building something like this in this region specifically. The value of free hands. 
also something else to consider in building a cob structure are other energy efficiency measures like radiant floor heating and cooling, geothermal heating and cooling, solar. Um, these are all systems that work well with the intended design of cob structures. Uh, some of these have a lot of upfront costs, but the energy savings from these systems are often enough to help them pay for themselves in the long run over time. So it's something worth considering when you're building something like this. Uh, something else to factor into cost is maintenance. Uh, maintenance has to be factored into any structure that you're building. Um, and I know that there are people that report that these homes are traditionally, you know, kind of low maintenance, but maintenance needs to be factored into anything that you're building, uh, whether it's cob or newer construction. Uh, so with newer construction materials and methods, I'm noticing a pattern of things being made to last upwards of you know, 35 years or so, and that's with proper maintenance. So the fact that there are cob structures that have been standing for hundreds of years with proper maintenance, if, if proper maintenance is gonna be required anyway, I really don't think there's any contesting the durability of the material historically, especially when compared with our modern uh, materials that we use. Oh goodness, didn't mean to do that. Let's scroll back through here. Cobb, super neat. Lots of cool photos. It looks really cool. Lots of free form design. A lot of people like that. You make it look how you want to. Sorry, I'm having to scroll back to get to here. Da, 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 da. Costs. I found a lot of interesting things while I was looking this up. A lot of designs that I wasn't aware of. And also I saw some videos of people mixing the material by foot and that actually looked really fun to participate in. I would like to see if I could go and do something like that myself, maybe be a volunteer on one of these builds. Uh, so some successful examples I wanted to talk to you about with Cobb. Uh, so this is the Soda Construction Home Office Building, which is located in Bellevue, Pennsylvania. Uh, and they are both the title of Greenest Building in Pennsylvania. Uh, this was Western PA's first certified LEED Platinum project. Uh, there's a lot going on in this building. Um, so the exterior is cob, uh, which functions as a thermal mass, but behind the cob are straw bales. Uh, so the straw bales provide insulation, and according to soda construction, the straw bales perform as something called a hygric mass, which I had never heard of before this. I reached out to them for more technical information on how these bales function as a hygric mass, and I haven't heard anything back yet, but apparently they have the ability to regulate the humidity within the structure, which, you know, given that they are able to do that, that's a really neat effect of the material. Um, and there's lots of other things going on in this building as well. They've got the radiant floor heating, they've got geothermal. Along the top there, you can see the solar array going on. And I think this building serves another important purpose as well. Uh, so a lot of the pictures and things that I had earlier in the presentation were really free form designs and stuff like that. It takes a kind of person who wants to live in that kind of building. And it's far more common that people want to live in traditional cookie cutter looking structures that have a traditional aesthetic. And I think this building does a really great job of demonstrating that you can achieve a traditional aesthetic while utilizing renewable materials that have a higher function than modern materials. So I, yeah, I know it's kind of plain Jane looking, but I really like this building a lot. Uh, there's, you know, tons of successful examples of Cobb all over the world. You can find this building method on every continent. That's largely to do with the availability of earth being everywhere, but I think it's also driven by the demonstrated success and durability of the design as well. And in conclusion, I, I think that Cobb has a lot of potential. Uh, I think it's been demonstrated to be successful in many cases. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities to utilize it in a non-structural capacity where you can take advantage of the material without employing it to hold anything up and take advantage of the aesthetic of it as well. But there's certainly work that needs to be done on conveying the technical information to building departments and work that needs to be done to make it more available to builders because, you know,
currently this isn't a super popular option to build because there are a lot of hurdles that you have to go through it. Uh, you can go through those hurdles and you can get structurally engineered plans, but that's going to come with a lot higher price tag. And I hope that in the future they find a way for builders to be able to access this method without such hurdles to go through. And uh, I don't have my sources here, but I do have them attached in a Word document with the presentation. And that was it. I'm not hearing anything. Sorry, <laughs> always, always forget to unmute myself. Um, so this is a Cobb house that is in at Earth Haven. And when I was at Western Piedmont Community College, I, we took our students up here while it was under construction. This actually has a dirt floor. Uh, and uh, it was pretty impressive. I had never seen anything but all of the build or the mix was done by foot, like what you were talking, Josh. Uh, so they had, uh, you know, they had some guy that was, you know, some world renowned builder of these things. And it, the inside of it was cool. I was trying to find the pictures that, uh, that I had taken while we were there and I can't find them. I put, can't put my hand on them at all, but it is definitely very cool stuff. questions something i forgot to mention is uh that i wanted to go over at the beginning i should have mentioned is how each material in the mix works uh so the water provides workability to the material and also activates the clay the clay acts as a binding agent the sand provides strength to the material and prevents shrinkage when it's drying and the straw provides tensile strength to the material and almost acts like tiny little rebar within the cob And what's, go ahead. What's the, what's the drying time when you're making bricks? Do they use kilns? That I'm not certain of. And I think it's going to largely depend on the environmental conditions of, of where you're building. If you're in a humid place, it's probably going to take a lot longer for each layer to dry. <clears throat> Anybody else? Yeah, that's kind of what I was going to ask because I was thinking about building a cob structure somewhere like here and just how long, you know, it might take it to dry, especially if you're getting rain like two to three days every week. Anna, if you want to um, search Earth Haven. Okay. And go to their page, which it's not too far away. And down here at the bottom, you can uh, request information and they can, and they're, they're always, uh, you know, it's, it's a great big community. Uh, and that might be something you might want to take a trip and go see. It's very cool. Yeah. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I definitely want to take a trip out there. I was, I used to have a, uh, a connection out there for this, uh, this lady here and and somebody that can pronounce words better than me pronounce that name arjuna arjuna i uh, i've lost her contact for some reason but uh i had her cell phone number there for a while but i don't know very nice lady uh one thing that i have noticed about Eco, uh, the eco village, Earth Haven eco villages. You know, a lot of these people, uh, they make their, they earn a living by doing tours. So if you want to go out there and do a tour, it might be a little bit of money out of the pocket to, uh, you know, to to visit there. So uh, they have specific tours. Uh, you know, during days, right there you go. It's twenty dollars a person uh, to go visit but uh, it's very educational. And, you know, it takes a different, it takes a different uh, group of people uh, to live the way they do because there's very little air conditioning out there at all.
but it's you know very cool house love it other questions <laughs> 